Google just announced that 25% of their code is written by AI. Is this a trend we need to watch? Let's talk about it. Well, welcome back to AI Insights Innovation, where we talk about the truth of AI and how to make it work for your enterprise. I'm your host, David Lenthagum, author, speaker, Be List Geek, and an analyst with the Key Research. Let's get going. So this came about from uh, Google announcing uh, recently, and there's some links in the description. You can take a look at the articles. Uh, that they're increasingly using AI to generate more than a quarter of its new code, this according to their CEO. And uh, they announced that this approach enhances productivity and efficiency, uh, though it could potentially reduce, have some impacts on enterprises that we'll talk about. So this is not nothing that should be surprising anybody. And by the way, we've been using code generators for years and years. Uh, I always you know, tell people when I taught programming classes and wrote programming books, you know, try to use OPC, other people's code, because it's easier than writing everything from scratch. And really, as application developers, we shouldn't be write, writing everything from scratch. So we've always had, for the last 30-some odd years, these code generators that would generate some of the base classes of systems where we didn't have to necessarily start from scratch. And we just built additional functionality on top of those existing codes. So this doesn't surprise me. In fact, it surprises me that it's only 25%. Uh, according to Google, I suspect that it's a bit more because we're getting better at doing development. We're getting better at using code generators. And now with the advent of generative AI, we're able to write code that's more specific to what we need. It's more intelligent in how we, how we build this code. And I think developers are naturally taking advantage of it. And so this is something that uh, doesn't surprise, I think, anybody. But it's probably a good idea to look at where this is going to take us. So this is not only uh, for Google. I'm sure AWS is doing a lot of this stuff. So is Microsoft. NVIDIA is obviously uh, leveraging AI uh, for a significant amount of their coding infrastructure. And so this is definitely going to be a trend that we're not going to hit the reset button on. We're not going to go back to not using code generators uh, to write this stuff. But we have to look at the impact of this. There's a few things to consider. First. The environmental impact, the increased use of AI tools uh, it really is going to translate into higher energy use and data center costs, which is going to contribute to the environmental concerns. We always talked about the uh, you know AI um, sustainability problem, which is going to be something we're going to have to consider probably for the next you know 10 years. Uh, but enterprises are looking to take advantage of different technologies to start to work around these problems. Obviously, we've been using renewables for years, but in many instances we talked about last week uh, in the uh, AI Goes Nuclear uh, episode, and I urge you to go uh, look at that, uh, doesn't necessarily scale to the degree where we want it to scale. And so we're looking at other energy sources that are away from some of the fossil fuel stuff, namely uh, nuclear. So Google plans to go nuclear, lessens its energy burden from AI use, and they understand that this is going to spike uh, power consumption, and they're doing something about it. And I think most other organizations have to look at that as well. So it's interesting is that uh, with this announcement, Google got a bit of a bump uh, in the stocks. Use of AI is beneficial for Google's bottom line with Alphabet stock price as the uh, holder for Google. Uh, price bumping up 2% in the past day, and they're at up 36% in the past year. So they're doing well with the ability to monetize AI and the ability to convert the interest in generative AI specifically into profits. And I think Google is going to be one of many companies, including AWS, Microsoft, Google, lots of other uh, uh, micro clouds and startups out there uh, in different on-prem cloud providers. They're going to benefit greatly uh, by the rise of generative AI. Obviously, there's some problems that we need to solve. We have to deal with the ethical issues and the environmental issues. But I, I think we're on the way to ad addressing many of those, even though it's going to be an ongoing concern. So NVIDIA has also seen substantial gains in AI era, and the companies you know, like AMD you know, ultimately are working on this as well, as well as Intel and some other organizations that are benefiting from the, the AI boom that's occurring right now. So Google's continuing to invest in AI with plans to release a new Gem Gemini model and potentially an autonomous agent model moving forward. So they're going to be bound to the trends in AI, the ability to build net new LLMs, and we seem like we're announcing a new LLM every, every week now, and the ability to take advantage of new uh, trends that are emerging around generative AI, such as agentic AI. And that seems to be a larger focus right now, as well as building small language models. So it, most enterprises are talking about LLMs. Uh, 
things like Gemini, but they're deploying small language models and more tactile deployments of AI. And I think that's going to be a step in the right direction because we're going to be able to solve very tactical problems, very uh, uh, things are going to have incremental business value that's going to come back to the business. We're able to do so in a domain that's going to take us, you know, three months to six months to solve it, not these two year you know, huge big bang projects, which kind of go on forever and typically riddled with problems. So businesses are focusing at, at focusing on more tactical deployments of AI. And I think that's a step in the right direction. And Google is, of course, adding AI features to, you know, all of their systems, YouTube, Google search with AI overviews. And we've seen this. It's kind of baked in the cake. Uh, pretty much anything out there that's dealing with automation, certainly with productivity, where it's a word processing system, a calendaring system, or in this case, a, a search a search engine are going to be able to leverage AI as a tactical as a tactical mechanism, and it's not uh, it's not who's doing it; it's just everybody's doing it. So it's something that's going to be systemic to everything we do. So, what are the good and bad aspects of this? Well, um, the future where AI performs the most, if not all, of the coding tasks will be transformative to how we deal with tech coding. By the way. Uh, is something that can be automated. Those of us who have programmed before, and I was a developer, software engineer for the first part of my career, it was very robotic in the way we built systems. In other words, we had different patterns that we used to solve uh, the same problems over and over again. We learned from each other. And AI is kind of taking that place. In other words, it's understanding best practices and how you build and code something. And it, in essence, can take the knowledge of 10,000 different professional coders and determine the best approach, the most efficient approach, the, the, the most uh, optimized memory consumptions, I.O. consumption, things like that, and build it into the code. So we're going to end up writing more uh, optimized code in doing this, You're moving it away from the human beings, which are making dynamic decisions based on their experiences as one human being. Uh, versus making a uh, decision in terms of how we're going to code something based on the knowledge of, you know, 10,000 or more developers. That's pretty cool stuff. So in other words, it's not going to get us to a under-optimized code state, much as what we had to run into with the, with the code generators in the past, but it's going to be pretty good at developing the best code, certainly better code than I think most of the developers can program, no matter how good they are. So with this, we're going to see increased productivity and efficiency. Um, Speed to develop applications, uh, again, not starting from scratch, and the ability to you know, automate repetitive, time-consuming tasks. And therefore, the engineers can you know, kind of focus on what engineers should focus on, the ability to be innovative and creative and how you're going to build this stuff. So they're going to become good at using these tools and therefore able to build these systems in twice the speed, uh, you know, two times the speed that they could just a few years ago. And I think that's a step in the right direction. The businesses are going to see benefit from that, more efficient code, better systems, more optimized systems. So that's going to be a, that's going to be a net plus. Uh, however, we're going to see some job loss around this. So the AI models like these developed by Google gain the ability to write substantial amount of the code. And if we're writing substantial amount of the code, with AI coders, we need fewer entry-level positions that are there for software engineers. I don't think we're going to see a complete, you know, decimation of the software engineering career path or the programmer or coder career path, but we are going to see some changes. And in fact, we're probably going to need fewer of them. And the ones we we do need are the ones that are very AI aware. So they know how to develop, but they also know how to le leverage AI tools to build uh, to build and deploy these systems. And so this could necess necessitate a uh, change in education and training towards more advanced skills uh, that AI cannot replicate which I think is fine. I think engineers, the good engineers out there, are the ones I want to lever, leverage around their innovation and creativity, uh, not necessarily their, their coding skills. And those are engineers that are normally going to have more value uh, within the enterprises that leverage them. And I think the shift in that direction, it's obviously going to have some negative impact on some people. It's going to displace many of the entry-level, more tactical-oriented jobs. But it's going to build uh, more opportunities for people that like to do what people do, be creative and innovative. AI has troubles doing that, the ability to have one original thought. And I think that's where the human beings shine. And working with AI, it's going to be kind of a one plus one equals three uh, kind of equation. So there are some quality and security concerns. AI-generated code could raise concerns regarding quality of the, of the code itself. Um, 
I haven't seen that as much. Normally, the code that's generated by generative AI systems seems to be pretty spot on, uh, but I'm not a software engineer anymore. I can't evaluate how efficient it is, but it seems to be pretty good. And since AI can sometimes produce errors in the code, uh, if there's no human insight, things aren't caught, uh, it has a hallucination, codes something incorrectly, you know, makes a rookie mistake like, uh, you know, creating uh, application with, uh, with a memory leak. <laughs> those are, you know, writing, writing to a null, null, null pointer, those sorts of things that blow your system up. They may occur, but I doubt we're going to see too much of that because there's too many safeguards in place where it's normally not going to generate that kind of code. And we also have to think about security. If it is generating code, are we going to have these, uh, you know, AI engines that are compromised that may be building code with some sort of a backdoor in it so uh, bad actors can, you know, get into the system? All of that's a possibility. So we have to put uh, mechanisms in place to ensure that it doesn't happen or ensure it doesn't happen that often. In other words, we're removing the risk. What about innovation and new opportunities? While some roles may be displaced, the evolution of AI and coding could create new opportunities in AI oversights, AI ethics, which is a big, huge growth area now, and more specialized tech, tech position that blend engineering with AI expertise, AI engineers, data scientists, uh, infrastructure engineers, AI platform engineers, those are all net new, uh, net new jobs that I'm seeing out there now that are growing like crazy. And I think the ability to kind of step into those roles uh, is going to be a good option for anybody that may be displaced by these uh, AI coding, uh, coding systems. We also have to consider about the economic implications. Um, companies that effectively leverage AI for coding could gain in market share and reducing operational costs, meaning their value goes up. In other words, need less humans, need to pay less, still get the same amount of productivity, if not more productivity, you know, therefore they gain in value. And we're going to see instances of that occur where these organizations are able to leverage, leverage generative AI or AI in general as a true force multiplier for their particular business, you know, creating innovative differentiators that are able to take them to the next level. And that's the real value that AI can bring. However, this shift could also widen the gap between organizations that adopt AI and those that do not. So we are going to see some leaving behind of organizations that are slow with the AI uptake. So they're not using AI to generate code. Uh, they're not using AI with some of their core information systems. And so we're going to kind of see they have and they have not. It's not necessarily companies that are able to spend more money than other companies, but companies that have invested significantly in AI and are truly using it to gain a, a tremendous value in their marketplace. And then maybe they're close competitors that haven't done that. And the ability to uh, provide better customer experiences, the ability to provide better productivity, lower costs, things like that. And we are going to see organizations that are able to differentiate themselves in the marketplace uh, based on their use of AI, and the close competitors are going to suffer from that. And I think that's just the way it goes uh, in an uh, open marketplace. Uh, and we've seen this many times before in the past, people who leveraged uh, you know, the internet in the late 90s versus companies that were slow on the uptake, and obviously companies that leveraged the internet as a true force multiplier for their business were able to take their businesses to the next level. Finally, and the final concern would be legal and ethical challenges. So the widespread use of AI coding could raise questions about copyright issues, intellectual property rights. This, this is truly going to be a core concern because I think some developers that have code out there on the open internet uh, may see that code replicated um, without attribution uh, in an application, the way they do a bubble sort, the way they, you know, uh, algorithms they've written, things like that. Uh, and they may be concerned about them not being, being compensated from that. I see this as well. I mean, with my 17 books out there and 5,000 plus articles, in many instances when I'm using ChatGPT or their large language models, I see my own work and my own IP come back at me when I ask a question. And that doesn't mean I'm legally entitled to compensation for that, but I can see where if this would run afoul, of a larger organization that may have a copyright on those particular codes, uh, coding uh, styles, coding parameters, coding approaches may end up uh, uh, having a legal issue with it uh, coming up within a code generator, in this case, an AI code generator. So we need to develop legal frameworks to evolve and address the issues. And I think a lot of it's going to be about uh, different test cases in court over the next five years. People are going to get sued. We're going to test them in court. And we'll see what the court says about copyright issues via AI. We already have uh, publishers 
and writers, uh, you know, that are suing uh, LLM providers based on the fact that they see their own IP, their work coming back out of these LLMs. And we'll see how that goes as well. I think that'll be dependent on how we do it. So AI has a potential to revolutionize the way coding is done. But we have to consider the upsides and the downsides, the power consumption, job displacement, ethical concerns. But I think the positive side of this is that mostly this will have a positive impact on the workforce, positive impact on the job market, uh, you know, creating new careers. That doesn't mean you, you, can't, uh, you can't wait for something to happen. You have to shift your career and manage your career according to the way the marketplace is changing. But there's more get in, good in this and bad in this. So what about in, in, uh, issues around software engineering? Companies using AI-crafted code have reported experiencing outages and cybersecurity problems, again, due to the lack of oversight. And this is probably the new early days of the coding systems, and they're just unable to um, uh, debug the system that's going to add bugs to the code. And so this is going to be a bit of a trial and error. And I would say now that if you have uh, AI coding systems in place, uh, that you probably still need to look at the code, see what it's doing, test the code uh, probably twice as hard as you would the code that humans are writing to see if there's any issues that are popping up. And again, they're normally pretty easy to spot because when AI makes an error, it makes a huge error uh, that's uh, d that's pretty uh, glaring. Uh, so it'll be a bit of a trial and error, I think, over the next couple of years as we're depending more on AI coding and our ability to kind of get comfortable with doing this. So I think it's something to look at, and I think it's something that most businesses uh, should be considering right now if they're not employing. And I, I think that any organization that's doing coding right now that has software engineers lying around, they're already using these tools, uh, whether you know it or not. They're you know using uh, you know LLMs to help generate some of their base model code, even do some of the testing, uh, do some of the research and coding best practices. And that's just the smart thing to do. So these tools are available for us. They're pretty much free. Uh, leverage them. They're going to have a big business benefit. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, check out our content here at The Cube and Silicon Angle. Some great reporting here, uh, uh, some great interviews and, and video content that's here. Check that out, including mine, but my colleagues and the other folks who are working here, which is absolutely a uh, awesome place to understand how this technology stuff is working. And if you're looking to keep up with technology, uh, then keep tuning back in here. So until next time, you guys stay very safe. I'll see you next time. Cheers.